tell us a little bit about uh, the robot that we're going to be taking a look at. So this is the uh, the, the Vision 60 robot. It is our uh, base robot that we sell to both uh, civilian and DoD customers. It's all the same uh, robot model. Um, the, the biggest use case that we've been seeing, or the autonomous use case, we'll say, is this uh, idea of persistent security. So the robot can go navigate you know, fence lines or perimeters that you used to have to have you know, people watch all the time, and you can just have it do that 24-7 with autonomous planning and wireless charging systems. The robot can detect people, cars, or any other obstacle that you want to set out for it to detect, and then when it sees that, it can send an alert back to the security center saying, hey, I saw a person there, or I saw a vehicle here, um, you should go check it out. Here's what it looked like, and it'll send back a snapshot. The other big use case for the robot is this tactical deployment. So you have a man controlling the robot, and you send it into uh, scenarios where like EOD or explosives are found, or law enforcement or fire search and rescue can use it, where you send the robot into dangerous areas that you don't want to put humans' life in risk. The robot has a pretty complex or wide array of sensor packages it comes with out of the box. Uh, beginning with it has five RGB cameras with the front ones being stereoscopic. These are very wide angle uh, lenses that let you see about 170, 160 degrees uh, from each camera. So you have complete 360 view of the robot at all times. Um, below the cameras on the front here, we have a Intel 435 depth sensor uh, that lets it map the ground plane uh, when you want to do that. That helps it uh, more elegantly climb things such as stairs or very rigid structured terrains. It's very good for indoor activities, but there's a lot of cases in the outdoor world where you have high grass or dust or sand that you don't want to use these depth sensors. So that's why we use the, uh, the touch feeling of the ground to navigate more of that. Uh, there's also built-in uh, two-way audio on all the sensor heads here. So you can listen and speak through the robot in case of uh, you want to talk to somebody that you find out in the field, if it's hostage negotiation, or any other use case where you just need to communicate with somebody in a remote location. Uh, this is a thermal camera add-on. Uh, it's made from FLIR. Um, the robot is agnostic to a lot of external sensor packages. We don't specify you have to use this camera or that camera or this sensor. It's really designed to incorporate anybody's off the shelf or you know industrial uh, sensors. So all you have to do is you know mount the camera, plug it into the USB slot on the top of the robot, and we have a lot of drivers that support pretty much everyone's camera across the industry. Uh, we support a very smith or a wide array of streaming protocols from RTSP, uh, H.265, H.264 encoding, and pretty much everything standard across the industry. Next to the camera, you have one of the two GPS module uh, GPS antennas on the robot. Uh, with the uh, uh, GPS module internal. Uh, between the two antennas, you get position and heading, and then we can also ingest RTK correction data to give the robot five centimeter accuracy when autonomously navigating via GPS. On top of the robot also, we have a, a wide array of mounting arrays, or mounting holes, and rail systems that you can mount, uh, uh, like Picatinny rails or other rail mounts that uh, add a wide variety of payloads that, you know, with quick release, um, capabilities. These rails are pretty standard across the DoD, um, so we incorporated that into the, uh, the base design of the robot. It's comms agnostic, so um, out of the box there's no radio here, but you have Wi-Fi antennas and uh, LCE antennas uh, mounting back here, and that can the onboard router can just, you know, cell or Wi-Fi signals to command the robot, or if you want to attach an external radio like the Silvis, you can. You just plug it straight into uh, any of the three Ethernet cable ports on top. You have LAN, WAN, and a straight line onto the onboard computer. Um, with that said, you now we can now integrate three different IP devices on the, on the robot, or uh, USB or SMA uh, camera, uh, camera lines for like little ice cube cameras. Uh, the robot also has two power ports, one for unregulated 42 volt power supply. You can draw as much as you want and another one that is 12 and 24 volt regulated power with the ability to adjust that internally on the robot. There's a little regulator switch you can, you can toggle. And on the belly of the robot, you have two more of these uh, depth sensors that it uses to map the ground plane. The, the whole middle section of the robot here, this, this part here is where all the compute box is held, and below that, this is the battery for the robot. We have two flavors of battery. We have a, a wall power chargeable battery with the port being right here. Um, the battery will fully charge in about an hour and a half and the robot will deplete the battery in about three and a half hours at full speed. If he's just used in mixed use, like standing, walking a little bit, pivoting, uh, he'll get eight to nine hours of power. And if he's laying prone, just acting as a sensor package or a relay, comms relay station, he'll get 20 to 24 hours of power out of the battery. Um, on a lot of the autonomous missions, we set up these wireless charging docks where the dog, after running its route, will come back and autonomously dock itself 
begin charging, and while he's charging, another dog will go run the mission. The legs of the robot are, are it's three degrees of freedom. You have the abduction, which is essentially the, your shoulder here, it's this motion. Then you have the hip, which is, uh, is this motion. So it's this pivot here, and then you have the knee, which is, you know, you, you, this motion. Um, and so you have 12 different joints that pivot in real time to keep the robot balanced and moving around and navigating. So if I, you know, wiggle the robot, like, he'll, you can see him, like, correcting for my impulses. All the motors are all uh, kept up in here, so everything from this point on down is mechanical, um, and everything is very field serviceable. So with just four bolts, you can take the entire leg module out, throw a new leg in, and it's good to go. That's a very big de design philosophy across the robot. The battery's four bolts, battery comes out, new battery goes in. So you are talking before about how this robot's actually uh, using other sensors to figure out the terrain and so on. Correct. Tell us a little bit more on how that works. So instead of relying on vision, the, the robot can, in a sense, literally feel the ground. So every time the feet strike the ground, you'll get a current spike in all of its leg motors. And we can measure that current spike in combination with the onboard IMU to calculate how the robot has struck the ground, what its position is in terms of yaw and pitch, and how it's doing in balance. And it can use all that information in real time to do very quick controls calculations in order to balance and stabilize itself. And in the event that the robot does flip over, it has the capability to invert all of its legs and operate in an upside down state. If you had specialized payloads on top that you need to stay on top, you can tell the robot to roll over and it will go back down, flip itself and stand back up. So it's more or less designed in a way that no matter what happens to the robot, the user can still keep using it. It's designed to be a, you know, unstoppable mobility platform in a sense. From the user's perspective, this is what you'd see when you use one of our controllers. Um, on the home landing page, you see a digital twin of the dog and what it's doing in real time. And you can use this information to help diagnose problems in the field or orient yourself if you're operating out of line of sight. You can see how every leg is positioned and what it's currently doing as you move. Um, Moving down the line on the right side here, we have a couple of different uh, visuals you can see from the robot. So I can switch into its cameras and I can see a live feed of everything the dog sees and you know switch between the different cameras all around the dog just at the top of a button. I also can switch quickly to different payloads we have attached, like a boson, like a clear uh, thermal camera, where you can see a, a thermal image of everything the robot sees. Or I can switch to, you know, its object detection pipeline, where you can see everything it's identifying as person or vehicle. And this is what's used in a lot of the persistent security uh, deployments. Moving down on the right, you also have its map. So from here, there's no GPS where we're standing, but I can give it, you know, pin waypoints uh, and say like, go here, go here, go here, and it will go execute that mission. Or I can hit record and then drive the robot and it will remember everything that it just did. It will drop essentially breadcrumbs as it travels, giving it heading and positional data of where it needs to be at a given time in its mission. Um, additionally, you can store these missions and stitch them together as like a build your own deployment thing. Um, each route can be uh, nested in other routes so that you can put it all together in one long mission so you don't have to just record it in one go or you can mix and match if you record different segments or different uh, routes that you want to do. You can say, you know, go run route one, two, and three, and then the next day you can say, go run three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. You can turn on his depth cameras, and in a moment, he'll map the ground plane out and begin to chat. So that's the ground plane that he sees. And if I turn the robot towards me, he's gonna draw us as these little barricades that he can't get through, and in front of him there's a stand that he's also mapping as an object he can't get through. If he believes he can step over something or on it to something, he'll map it as a little, lip like this. So to the right of the uh, obstacle in front of him, he can. there's a little ledge that he thinks he can step on, and he'll draw that as a little uh, elevated lump on the, the ground plane. If he's going upstairs, you'll see it very nicely drawn uh, as the staircase. When you're in vision mode, he can autonomously switch into, you know, walking flat, ascending or descending stairs, or switching into hill gate if he detects that he's struggling to climb very complex or loose terrain like gravel. Well, great. Thanks for telling us about your robot. It's really fantastic.